Happy to be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Jacob Kelly. I'm a regional extension agent on the commercial horticulture team down in southwest Alabama. So we're the ones getting all the weather and uh, trying to stay dry. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. Uh, I'm going to be talking about budding citrus today and some techniques we might use for that. Um, so it may be tempting, especially for homeowners, to plant an orange or lemon seed after they've gotten the fruit from the store. Um, but this is usually a bad idea because it takes so long for these things to fruit and the fruit may not be edible when you get to that point, you know, five to seven years is how long it's going to take for that seed to develop, uh, into a plant that can produce fruit. And then you've waited all that time and it may not be edible. Um, and, uh, it's, and it's probably going to die because we get cooler temperatures here in Alabama. And a lot of this stuff is not as frost tolerant as we need it to be. Um, so uh, to make up for all this time and to get the best of both worlds, we like to uh, bud our citrus um, and uh, take cultivated varieties that we know will work and put them on cultivated varieties of rootstocks that we know can withstand our temperatures. Uh, and then we're off to the races. I'm going to go over some definitions uh, real quick. Um, so let's talk about grafting and budding real quick. Uh, it's the act of joining two cultivars of the same or similar species together to produce a new plant with desired characteristics that we want. So grafting is usually using a piece of a stem or a branch with multiple buds on it as a scion. Uh, and budding is just using a single bud with the bark around it as our scion. Uh, budding is our preferred method of choice with citrus because it's easy and quick to do we can pump out a lot of plants uh, in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, a budded citrus tree or any grafted tree has two parts, the scion and the rootstock. Our scion is the above portion of the ground, above ground portion of the tree. That's our selected cultivar. That's gonna produce the fruit that we want it to produce. Uh, and the rootstock is the lower trunk and roots of this new tree. So we use different cultivars for scion and rootstock to give us the benefits of both. And I'm gonna go over some of those cultivars of rootstocks that we use in Alabama on the next slide. But uh, real quick, quick about cambium. The cambium layer is a layer of actively dividing cells between the xylem and the phloem of the plant. Um, this is one of the growing points of the plant. There's apical meristems on the tops of shoots. And then there's these secondary meristems that help the plant grow out wider, like a trunk getting wider. Um, and that's the cambium. The cambium is a secondary meristem. So when we graft or bud a plant, we've got to ensure that we get cambium to cambium contact. So that's the cambium of the scion and the cambium of the rootstock have to come in good contact um, or the graft will not take and we'll just be left with um, our rootstock. And lots of those are not as fun to play around with. Um, so rootstocks uh, come in all shapes and sizes uh, and forms. Um, common rootstocks that we can use in Alabama are swingle, trifoliate arms, volk or volcomer lemon and sour orange. Uh, in Alabama, we like to use trifoliate orange. I don't recommend using swingle anymore. It's one of the uh, old timers has been around for a while. Uh, and it has some frost tolerance, but it just doesn't match up to the frost tolerance of trifoliate orange. Uh, we can get trifoliate orange down well below freezing. And if you attach a satsuma on a trifoliate orange, you've got a pretty frost tolerant plant down to the mid twenties at least. Um, uh, there are two cultivars of trifoliate orange. Um, we have Rubido and Flying Dragon. Uh, Rubido is our faster growing larger cultivar and flying dragon is our slower growing dwarfing cultivar. Uh, I would stick to one of these two if we're going to grow citrus outside. Uh, if you've got a greenhouse then those any of those other options might be a better fit for you. It just depends on what you're looking for. Um, what you're going to need for budding are hand pruners to remove your bud wood. Bud wood is just wood with buds on it. Think of it that way. Um, and a budding knife or a razor blade. I like to use a razor blade. A buddy tape, it's your polyethylene tape and it stretches 
It was originally made for burn victims, uh, but turns out it works really, really well for grafting and budding of plants. Uh, and then I like to keep a sharpening device around, whether that's a whetstone or some sort of knife sharpener, um, so I can keep my blade sharp. And this is so that I can get, make sure that I get a good, clean, straight cut so I can get that good cambium contact. Um, when we're selecting budwood for our sign, we usually want to collect, collect wood from this season's flush that has just become mature or hard. Um, you'll recognize this by a more rounded stem, like that picture shown. Uh, the stem's a little bit more rounded. That top one is, we're getting into uh, a little bit of new flush. It's hard enough to use though. So uh, you can see there's still some angles on those uh, stems, but between uh, in the inner nodes or between the leaf and buds, uh, it's a little bit more rounded. And that's kind of what we're looking for. This wood's gonna be harder than the fresh flush uh, and the fresh, fresh flush is gonna be quite flimsy and uh, very angular um, and a little bit harder to deal with. And you're not gonna get any take from that stuff. So we wanna stay away from it. Uh, and it can be budwood next go around. Uh, we would like this budwood to be similar in diameter to our rootstock that we're gonna be budding onto, but a lot of times this isn't feasible. So as long as your bud is smaller than the rootstock diameter, you're probably okay. All right, uh, let's get into the, the dirt. Uh, talk about tea budding. Tea budding is preferred by most of our growers because it's easy. Um, you have a high success rate and we can tea bud our rootstocks when uh, they are a suitable size, pencil thick or pinky thick, uh, whichever you want. Um, the bark needs to be slipping for a tea bud. Uh, and that kind of looks like that picture on the left. You can see that bark separated away from the rest of the plant pretty easily. Um, and uh, we need budwood available. All three of these things need to be met um, so we can tea bud. In our area, this is, you know, when you're ordering your strawberries, June, July, and the beginning of August, put that strawberry order in, um, like Dr. Vincent said, and then uh, go hit your greenhouse or wherever and start tea budding your citrus. The procedure goes as follows. We want to collect our budwood, remove the leaves, and keep that budwood moist. Uh, sharp and clean sanitize our budding knife or razor blade and make a vertical cut one to one and a half inches long through the bark. Um, of, a, of the smooth area of a rootstock. There's gonna be thorns and leaves and stuff. We wanna avoid all that and get a smooth piece like on that picture to the left. After we make our uh, vertical cut, we're gonna make a horizontal cut. This can be made at the top or the bottom of that vertical cut. If you make it at the top, it's gonna to be a true T-bud. Um, and if you were to make it at the bottom, it's an inverted T-bud. This is all based off of preference. I prefer an inverted T-bud myself. Um, you can choose, you can use the point of the knife to lift the edges of the flaps, like in that picture. I always start from the intersection of the horizontal and vertical cut and work my way away from that incision towards the opposite end of that vertical cut. Uh, when the bark is slipping well, when you get into really warm months like July, it, this should be really easy. Um, try not to touch any of the internal portions of the rootstock or the bud with your fingers because oils from your skin will likely reduce the rate of success. So um, either wear gloves or try to uh, grab the bud by the stub that's left over from that leaf petiole uh, when you're moving it around. Try not to get your oily hands on it. Um, after you make your cuts in the rootstock, you need to remove your bud from the budwood. And we're gonna remove our budwood by uh, slicing underneath it as flat as we can. Uh, we really just want the bark and the bud around it. So you're going to follow through underneath that bud and come up a little bit and you're still going to leave a little bit attached. Come back with your knife and at a 45 degree angle above that bud, uh, kind of notch it and it will remove that bud from the rest of the bud wood. Um, and that just makes it easier to handle and slide up into your um, bud cut. Um, so we, we would do that maybe a quarter of an inch or a half inch above or below that bud. Um, so we have a little bit of bark on there to play with. Um, we want it to be a flat, smooth cut um, so we can get good 
good cambium to cambium contact. If you scoop that bud out, uh, which I was really bad about when I first started budding, uh, you get a lot of wood behind the bud and that wood is going to keep that cambium from contacting the cambium of the rootstock and everything will dry out. Um, and that's no good. That'll reduce your rate of success. So after we remo remove the bud, we want to insert it into our rootstock. Uh, if any of this plant material is allowed to dry out, we're going to we're going to reduce our success. So we want to slide our bud up in there under the flaps. And if you do everything right, it'll be completely enclosed, like that picture on the left there. Uh, and then we want to wrap our buddy tape around it. Uh, we begin wrapping above or below our incisions, whichever you prefer. Uh, the main thing is that you want to ensure that you keep constant positive pressure when you're going around that stem. We want pressure to be the same all the way around, and that's going to secure that bud in place. Um, when you've gone about a half inch above or below um, where your incision were, was, you can make a loop and put the top of your tape back through it to hold everything in place. And after you're done, you've, you've just performed your first T-bud graft. So we want to keep everything wrapped up for 14 to 21 days, uh, but really not more than a month. Um, and if you've done everything right, uh, when you remove the tape, the bud should still be green and you should be able to see a very uh, thin, visible uh, callus around the edge of that bud. Um, if you remove this tape too early, the bud may still be green. Uh, however, it may turn brown and dry out and die, and then you've got to start back over again. So it's important to be patient when you're grafting citrus. All right, when our bark is not slipping on our rootstocks, we need to um, use a chip bud. And uh, we cut out the bud the same way. Um, and then we go to our rootstock and our rootstock, we're gonna do a thin upward cut uh, on the rootstock and then a second cut to make a notch at the top. You can kind of see it there in those pictures um, and then we're going to slide our bud up into that notch, uh, as, and it should hold by itself without you having to hold it there. And then we take the same as we would, uh, for our tea bud. Uh, like I said, this is better for if I'm trying to do some grafting late August, September, um, you know, trying to get that last flush from the citrus on uh, some root stocks and things like that. That's a good time to use your tea bud. Um, so you can get those last few grafts in there. So after we remove our wrapping and our bud and everything has for formed a union, we're gonna try to force this bud. Um, different things cause uh, these buds not to fire off. One of them is apical dominance. Oxen flows with the flow of gravity down from the apical meristem. So if we, and it suppresses all buds below it, it keeps lateral buds from growing out. So what we want to do is remove that apical dominance by bending that tip of that, um, the tip of the rootstock under our bud. Uh, we call this bending in the industry and we uh, bend instead of cut because we still want the leaves to uh, collect, you know, they're still solar panels and we still want them to collect sunlight and deliver photo assimilates to our plant, to our bud uh, and roots so everything can keep growing, but um, we don't want that oxen getting in there and disrupting our bud from uh, jumping out. So after our scion has started to grow four to six inches or more, we can remove that upper portion of that rootstock. It's got enough of its own solar panels. It's gonna keep taking off. And now we've got our new citrus tree. Um, and any suckers you might see growing uh, after you bend that rootstock over, just go ahead and remove those. They're going to be stealing from the bud we want to grow. Um, so we got to take those out. As our sign grows out, we'll need to stake it so we can get good vertical growth. If this is in a container, it'll be ready to plant in 20 to 24 inches. Um, and when we plant, we want to pinch the top or remove the apical dominance again in some way um, so that the plant can start to feather out and we can get good branching. Uh, and then you're off to the races. You can get fruit in as little as a year or two uh, from, from the bud and after it's growing out and things like that. Um, so that's all I've got on budding. I hope you have lots of success. And if we got time for questions, 
uh, I'm here to answer them. And, you know, if you live in Southwest Alabama, I'd be happy to come and uh, show some of my growers how to do some budding uh, on their farm and so they can be successful and not have to pay so much to get somebody else to come in and do it.